most people watch the news, see the horror in the world, and think to themselves, I can't imagine how hard that is. And then they change the channel because it's too painful to watch. Advocates, on the other hand, step up every single day to sit right next to people feeling pain. They meet people on the worst days of their lives. Victim advocates have a really unique role in this world. My work is a constant love letter to victim advocates to sit with people in the depths of hell. For their bravery, I want to thank every victim advocate on this planet. And although my role as a trainer is to teach advocates skills and theories that they may use in the line of duty, I often find that the advocates teach me much more. This podcast is my nod to the brilliant people who've attended my workshops and opened my eyes to new ideas every day. I'm Dr. Kate Watson, and this is Advocate Insights. Welcome to Advocate Insights, folks. I'm Dr. Kate Watson, and I have a fantastic guest with me today. Today, we are joined by Hannah, who is the Director of Content at DomesticShelters.org. Hannah, what can you tell us about you? Well, Kate, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, As you mentioned, I'm the Director of Content for DomesticShelters.org. So DS.org is one of the programs of Alliance for Hope International. And what we do is we're one of the leading sites on the internet for education about domestic violence. Um, We do a lot of advocate training all for free. Uh, And we also have the largest searchable database of domestic violence shelters and agencies um, in both the US and Canada. Um, So we are really a place for survivors and advocates and those who want to support both to come and learn and identify abuse, get help and heal. Those are our three, those are our three big goals for everybody. I can't imagine how much work goes into all of that. And for you to get up every day and do that work, you've got to really love it. I do. I I absolutely do. My background is actually interestingly in marketing, um, which is why I'm director of content, because what that means is basically anything we produce for the website, be it a article or a video or some of the events that we have, we do a purple ribbon awards every year. Um, because we think that every, we, we like to call it bringing hope to the hope bringers, um, because those across the domestic violence movement um, need to be honored and recognized for the ridiculously difficult work that we all do. Um, but yeah, as a background in marketing, I never really expected to find myself here, but there was a period of time where I got a little tired of making older men money that wasn't really doing anything for me or the people that I cared about or the issues that I cared about. And I ended up at domestic shelters and it's been absolutely wonderful. And we actually recently merged with Alliance for Hope International um, in the beginning of 2023. And that's been a huge, really positive change for us as well. So um, yeah, no, I encourage folks to check out uh, uh, domesticshelters.org because there's just a ton of useful information on there and pretty much everything we do is free. So, um, and when we get into talking a little bit more about what I'm going to be talking, I just want to say up front, I'm trying so hard to focus on things that are either very low cost or completely free because, you know, what we're talking about is a little bit quote unquote marketing and most people don't have what we consider a marketing budget, but awareness is so important and visibility is so important. So there are ways that that can be done without breaking your budget. hmm Awesome. Yeah, I think we should get into it because you're right. Like this is probably going to be a really unique conversation compared to some of the others that I've had on the show. It is at its heart, probably a marketing conversation, but you've used words like um, visibility. What was the other word you just used? Was it awareness? Yeah. 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 And then um, the one that I like to use when I think about marketing is accessibility, right? Like getting your word out there or a message out there or making yourself visible is about making your services accessible to people. And you are here with some ideas about how to do that. 
I know one of your ideas has to do with SEO. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so that's one of the big areas that my background is in, and it is a very annoying acronym that very simply, uh, it stands for what we call search engine optimization. And what that really boils down to is that when you Google something and you get to that results page, what content shows up first? What is the first website that shows up? What is the first picture or video that shows up since Google includes those in searches now? Um, if you're doing a search for things in your area, what's the very first business that shows up? Um, and there is a huge whole cottage industry around making sure that you are first in the Google search results or first is very, very difficult. Everybody wants to be in the top three. Those are really the, the choice, as we call it, the choice real estate on the search results page. Because if you think about it, it's funny because Google relatively recently, um, when you scroll, when you keep scrolling down in a search, you used to have multiple pages, right? Like you're doing like an index thing where you're on page one of your search and page two. They recently changed it so that it is endless scrolling. So you no longer go from page to, uh, page, to page, which is really sad because my favorite SEO saying is uh, no longer up to date, but the saying used to be, um, and please excuse slightly dark humor on this, the best place to bury a body is on the second page of a Google search result. Um, no. because nobody goes there. Just nobody ever goes there. And so it really is crucial to try and pull yourself up those rankings because that's where the majority of people are going to pay attention. It makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to keep coming back to this because if folks like have been listening to many episodes in a row and this feels like a really different topic, I just want to say we talk all the time on the show about how we have services that people don't access. We have resources they don't use. Well, if you're trying to get to the top of those Google searches, Hannah here is offering us some great ideas for how to do that. Was there anything else about SEO or should we move to the next topic that you have in mind? Um, yeah, two things that I would love to just touch on very quickly for SEO. Um, one is I, I also want to agree about the importance of I love how you put it as accessibility because that's really what it is. You know, I find myself occasionally using a lot of marketing lingo um, in what I do. Um, I talk about like impressions, which is the idea of how many times uh, your page has been viewed in a Google search or on social media or whatever. Um, and I use all these words, but really you're right. What it comes down to is the higher you are in the Google search results, the more people are going to be aware of you, which means the more survivors, the more victims are going to be able to find you and use your services. And that's why this is important. Um, and then as far as um, one of the big things that we do at domestic shelters when we're doing content creation um, is we try to make everything that we do action oriented. We want to be able to give you an action that you can take. Um, you know, we're very much about education, but along with education, we want to help people move along in their journey towards safety and towards a better life. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm including some actionable tips today. And my uh, actionable tip for anybody who's listening um, is to claim your Google business profile. This is completely free. You have this already very likely. Um, and all you need to do is simply Google claim my business profile. And it's going to the very first result is going to tell you what you need to do. And it's going to go step by step. Um, I am going to spring this on Kate a little bit, but I even have a link for a help article on how to do it that I'm sure she'll be able to include in the notes for this episode. Fantastic. I'm getting a nod. Um, and yeah, it's very simple to do. And what this does is the more information that you can put in there, the more likely Google is to put this to the top of the results page. So if someone is searching for shelter near me, you want yourself to be, you know, you want your shelter to be the first or second result on there. That's going to be really difficult to do if you don't have a fully claimed and set up business profile. And as I said, that is completely free. And it also lets you adjust a lot of things like your hours or your hotline number if you have a hotline. Um, so it is a great way for people to access uh, information about you and to be found. Awesome. Yeah. You know, some of my friends know well, all my friends know what I do for a living. And when they hear about one of their friends or family members who's in trouble or in need, they will call me and say like, well, what do I do? How do I help them? Where should they go? And I'm, I'm always struck by like, you know, 
didn't Google produce those results for you? Like, isn't that out there? And my friends are not dumb. I'm sure they did a Google search and I'm sure that it's overwhelming to, to sort through all the stuff out there. And so folks, if you're listening and you know that your resources or your services really do deserve to be at the top of that list, this is really helpful. Yeah, and it's interesting because that's actually the reason that DomesticShelters.org exists in the first place. We were founded in 2004, uh, excuse me, 2014 um, by our original founding um, organization called Teresa's Fund. And Teresa's Fund um, was founded uh, by the McMurrays, who have a background in content marketing. And they identified that um, it was a point in time where most people weren't calling a hotline first. Most people weren't starting um, with going to a shelter or contacting an advocate. Most uh, victims, most survivors are starting with a Google search because a lot of people don't even know what they're experiencing as abuse. And that's, yeah, that's, that's how we got started was just a place for people to go um, to learn that. And so we, the majority of, we've done a couple of studies and there have been some other studies done as well. The majority of victim survivors are starting on the internet. And so being able to have you in front of those eyes is so massively important because you're more likely to have um, clients come to you from an internet search than you probably are from like referrals just because of the sheer numbers. Yeah. This is probably a topic for another day. Um, but this is what happens. Like I listen to people and I think, you know, like there's this other thing we should talk about that's, you know, way off to the side, but a topic for another day is to, to know how to anticipate what those Google search terms are that people use when they don't even really know what they're experiencing because i'm sure not that many people are typing i need a shelter that will accept my dog like they're not they're not like typing these things they might be typing things like i'm scared at home um or don't know what to do about uh boyfriend and i i'm fascinated by how we figure out what 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 terms people are using to find us and then how do we make sure that we're we're getting connected to people using those terms i see you smiling like like you're thinking oh i could go on about that would you like to say anything about that or should we just like restrain ourselves and talk about this another day (laughs) i i would absolutely love to talk about this another day because what you have just described is one of the biggest functions of my job Um, because those phrases, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to give some, you know, SEO marketing lingo here. Those phrases are called keywords. Um, and those keywords are, uh, basically what signals what we call search intent and search intent is sort of that area of what is someone looking for and how are they talking about it? So the examples that you gave are great examples, and I can actually give you um, one that we use um, that is a real example that I came across during uh, my research, and the search was simply, my husband yells at me. We discovered so much search intent beyond that, that behind that, that translates to domestic violence. Um, And when we were able to, we call it ranking for the keyword, because as I spoke about on those Google pages, you're in position one, you're in position two, position three, those are ranks, right? So we talk about ranking. And when we were able to get a significant rank for that keyword, because I found it and realized the search intent behind it, um, the content that we aimed aimed at that like took off uh, because a lot of people were searching for that. And it's so hard unless you kind of know how to find the keywords and find the search intent to understand that, that it's really helpful when you have, um, when you have those resources to be able to set that up. And that's, that's essentially a huge part of my function at domestic shelters and why there's a marketing person in, you know, a domestic violence uh, organization, um, because it works. I just want to borrow your brain for like a day. Um, or like, you know, aren't we on the cusp of just being able to download our brains and then upload them? Like, (laughs) we've got to be close to that, I think. (laughs) 
Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna practice some self restraint and not go down that path. We can reconnect and do that one another day. But I know you wanted to say something specifically about domesticshelters.org. What was it that you wanted our audience to hear about that? Uh, I um, what I really wanted to talk about is as we're talking about um, awareness um, and and accessibility, as you put it, which again I absolutely love that. Um, it doesn't have to be a solo venture. Like you don't have to do this on your own through your own, just through your Google profile, just through your own channels. Um, you know, like your website or your social media or what have you. Um, other places can help. In fact, the more links of people linking to your site, the better, because uh, Google thinks that if other sites are linking to you, then there must be a reason for that, right? Like there's, you're worthy of those links for a reason. So the more links, the better. One way that we would love to be able to help is I mentioned the domesticshelters.org. Um, we call it our get help tool, but it is a searchable database um, for shelters and agencies and family justice centers. Um, and all you need to do is just go on to domesticshelters.org. Um, in the upper right hand corner, you'll see something that says DB Professionals. There's a ton of resources on there for you, but the very first one is Claim and Manage Your DS Location. From there, it's really straightforward. You're just entering your information. Um, and what this does is it's going to create a profile for you within our searchable database. So when any of our users goes in and pops in their their name of their town or their zip code or even like their state if they're like really casting a wide net you're going to show up there and we have had instances where our profiles actually rank higher than the actual website for that um for that agency simply because we've been doing this a while and we're really good at it um but use that to your advantage claim a location like come um, it's like i said it's completely free um and it gets you access to some really cool stuff like um we have a wish list platform we actually partnered with amazon to create this wish list platform we were a pilot um for their new giving platform and it's really awesome because basically there's this giant catalog of pretty much anything that you might ever need from paper towels to puppy pee pads if you have a pet shelter on site um, and you can go through the catalog, pick out whatever you want. If there is something that we don't have on there, you just shoot us an email and we'll add it on really quickly. Um, and then you generate, you create this wish list, and you can put this wish list on your website. You can put it on your social media channels. You can create a little QR code or whatever and put it on like your your swag that you hand out at events or just on flyers. Um, and the really cool thing about it is everything is done through Amazon and through our wish list platform. So if somebody wants to donate, they go in, pick out the stuff that they want to donate, and it's just like making an Amazon order. And it's completely free to you as the shelter to use. All of the distribution, all of the fulfillment, that is all handled on our end and on Amazon's end um, and on the donator's end as well. I believe they get like a little surcharge just for extra, but it's shipped directly to you. So you don't have to worry about people who want to donate if you're a confidential location um, and you don't have to worry about, you know, going to the post office and picking up a big package or that kind of thing. Um, so I would just, I would really strongly encourage everybody to claim uh, your profile in domesticshelters.org. Keep it up to date. Um, I, you know, I don't normally talk too much about our traffic numbers, traffic being how many people or how many visits to the website we get every year. Um, but domestic shelters averages over a million views a year. So we have that accessibility. Let us help you also get that accessibility. That is what we are here for. That's great. That's great. You know, I'm, I'm noticing this like parallel thing because I talk to advocates all the time who say, we have all these resources and people don't utilize them. And yet, Hannah, you're saying, I have all these resources and there are agencies and advocates out there not using them. So to the listeners, if you complain that people don't utilize your services and your resources and what you have to offer, just think for a moment about all the things out there that you yourself are not accessing that are available to you and domesticshelters.org being one of them. So I'm so glad we got to hear about it. Um, Hannah, is there anything that you haven't had the chance to say yet that you really wanted to make sure you conveyed to our audience? 
Yeah, um, there is one thing about any of this stuff that you're doing, if you decide to try and do some SEO, if you decide to claim and manage your location on domestic shelters, I would just strongly recommend that you don't just have one point person on those. Have at least two or three people who have access to all of those accounts and who understand how to use it. Because I have definitely noticed, and this is this is not a thing unique to this field. This is on every marketing area that I have ever worked in through what is a embarrassingly long career at this point in time. Um, somebody will lose track of access and it will just be forgotten about and it'll just kind of sit there and languish. And, you know, for say your Google business profile or your domestic shelters profile, that's not the kind of thing you need to be checking every single day. It should be very low effort. But somebody should be going in and updating it every six months or every year. And that should be a scheduled task that is account that someone is accountable for because these are really easy things because they're they're they are easy, just straight up. They're simple, they don't take very long to do, they're relatively low effort. And we all know when things get super hectic and busy, those are the things, especially if you don't see the direct outcome in front of you, those are all the things that fall to the side. So if you're going to do it, do it right and make sure you have a couple of people cross-trained and if someone leaves, replace them. Um, otherwise, it really is, you know, technology can be scary and it can feel really overwhelming, but there are websites like uh, Squarespace or Wix, uh, W-I-X, where you can build your own website. Some of them are free um, or some of them are very simple, uh, very low cost, where you can just set it up piece by piece and it'll tell you what to do. And then you get to decide how you share your resources and what that looks like. Um, so there are a lot of things that you can do for low effort, low cost to really improve this that you shouldn't have to keep up with every single day. And I think that um, I think folks, especially in our field, don't really realize that. And that's. You know, like I said, it works really well for us. So I think that it can work really well for other folks too. I'm so glad that you said that. Um, you know, you, you, you said this can be kind of intimidating or overwhelming for people. I, I think we are, you and I, talking to an audience who don't think of themselves as marketing people or technology people very often. Um, and so folks, if you're listening and you're thinking, oh, that's not my job, just know that even though we are saying, like, if you're going to do it, do it right, you can do it small piece by small piece. And, and, and each of the things that Hannah has described seem to me things that like really anybody could pick up and do. It is. It really is. Anybody can pick up and do it. And most of these things are designed for like small business owners who might not have technology background, but there's no reason that across the field, we can't take advantage of it as well. And I would encourage anyone who does kind of have that thought of like, that's really overwhelming. I don't, that's not my job to just kind of think like in your life of an, as an advocate, how many things have you ended up doing that you thought you would never do because it was necessary? This can be one of those things, but it shouldn't be too stressful. But that is kind of like what we all do, right? We have to wear, we all wear so many different hats because we have to, because there aren't enough heads for all of the hats. <laughs> I'm kind of laughing here because. I have a feeling that is the thing you said that is going to like change everyone's mind <laughs> because I'm just imagining advocates all across the country hearing you say, but you've done a lot of things that you didn't think were your job and they're all going to go, ain't that the truth? Um, so folks, you did it before, you can do it again. Um, Hannah, thank you so much. I'm going to try and, and wrap this up because I already prepared you that once we're done recording this episode, I'm going to try and convince you to write a book. So I need to leave some time for that. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to bring us to the end here. This has been so great. Thank you for joining us today to the listeners. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please send a message to me at kate at advocacyacademy.org. That's Kate, K-A-T-E, at Advocacy Academy, like it's all one word, dot org. Also, Hannah has volunteered to have her contact information available on our website. So if you would rather reach right out to Hannah directly, that'll be available at our website and you can find it right where the podcast is. Um, otherwise, folks, please just check us out next time when we explore more Advocate Insights.